She's a four-time Olympic medalist, two of them gold, who welcomed baby number two over lockdown while homeschooling six-year-old daughter Summer. Rebecca Adlington has joined us. Goodness me, Rebecca, you've been a busy lady, haven't you? <laughs> yeah, it always seems that way, but yeah, he's sleeping for now, so we're happy. <laughs> oh my goodness, you've got him into a good routine if he's able to sleep whilst you do live telly. I'd say you've got this whole mother of two thing <laughs> nailed, Rebecca. Well done. Now, how, how has it been, though, um, over lockdown, you know, having essentially a lockdown baby? Because not everybody's found it that easy, really. No, it's definitely been different. I think because I have something to compare it to, that it's kind of probably more difficult. Like my partner, Andy, couldn't be at any of the scans. He couldn't come to any of the appointments with me or just listen to the heartbeat or anything like that. So that was really sad. And you yeah. kind of had this anxiety the whole way through going, is he going to be allowed at the birth of me? Luckily, he was because I left it way too late and they were just like, yeah, go in with her and it's absolutely fine. So luckily he was there because I know so many people that weren't yeah. able to have their partner with them. And it was just a really hard time because you weren't able to share that together. Yeah, I, I mean, think, I think that was one of the things I... I mean, so many sad, terrible things over this last 18 months. But I really felt that for pregnant... Uh, women because all of that stuff is just so it's the way for men to feel really involved isn't it Oh, massively, massively. And it was his first child as well. So he kind of felt like he was missing out and kind of wasn't able to share the journey with you. But obviously, luckily, he was there um, during the birth. I squeezed his hand. He, he said that his hand hurt more than me because I just <laughs> squeezed his hand. <laughs> Do you know what? One thing I found absolutely fascinating, Rebecca, is, is as we said, you know, you're an Olympic medalist and, and a mum of two. And after you had um, little Albie there, you were super body conscious, weren't you? Which just seems just incredible. And I think it's very much a testament of the time that we're living in at the moment. I think the thing is, I've never met anyone that isn't self-conscious about their body. I'd love to meet the woman that is 100% confident and hasn't got any insecurities. And I think it's different when you have a baby because you're, it's out of your control. All of a sudden, this bump is getting bigger and everywhere is growing and you kind of feel like you're not in control of it. It's not the fact that you're not eating or not exercising. It's just your body's changing. And then little one comes out and... Summer, my daughter, openly told me, Mummy, it still looks like you've got a baby in your tummy. And you're like, thanks, that doesn't, that doesn't help. But it's so really, I remember, really difficult. I remember my daughter saying to me, Mum, why have you got holes in your bum? And I remember thinking, well, she, and she was talking about my cellulite, so I was trying oh. to think of it like that. <laughs> but you're, but you're, you're quite adamant to keep it real on your Instagram, aren't you? Because so many people aren't. Yeah, I think... I think it's kind of something that's important to me. I don't want somebody to meet me in real life and go, oh, you're not looking <laughs> yeah. you don't look like that. I'm really conscious of that. And also I get the fact that my six-year-old, she's obviously not on Instagram or anything, but she will be in the future. And I think it's really important to kind of be that good role model. And the thing is, we're all normal and we've got to normalise cellulite, stretch marks, whether it's bad skin or just that I have a lump and bump all the time. And that is just who I am. Um, and I think we need to portray that a bit more on social media because I do it. I scroll through and see these perfect women that I'm just like, makes me, you feel worse about yourself yeah. that you're not that. Mm. Uh, Rebecca, speaking about your online presence, you met your lovely Andy um, online, I understand. Um, why did you go that route? Why did you choose to go that route to meet and find love? You know what? It was something that I was just like, oh, God, I don't want to do online dating. I just was terrified by all my friends' stories. And I just got to the point where I thought, you know what? That's how you meet people nowadays. It's very rare that you just bump into somebody and meet them. Um, so I was like, oh, I'll give it a try. Just see how it goes. And literally, I was on the app two weeks, um, matched Andy, my partner, and just hit it off. We I gave it another two weeks of chatting and then we met up and went out on a date and the rest is history and now we're sat here with a baby. <laughs> Did you know you were an Olympic champion? <laughs> no, he didn't. I, th I think she just put your name, so you just put Becky. Uh -huh. And the thing is, I wasn't going to make my profile picture me with my medals, was I? <laughs> <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, what, what, one thing that, that Andy's not going to experience, though, is you sort of going off to, to Tokyo for, for, for a few weeks for the Olympics, because you're going to have to do it here, aren't you? I think you're doing it from, from, from Salford. Are you a bit disappointed to not be able to fly off to Tokyo? 
Yeah, it's one of those that we kind of had it planned that we were going to go out there. And obviously, that what's happened over the past 18 months, it's just impossible to send everyone and kind of keep it safe. So we're doing it back in Salford. And to be honest, it kind of works out really well for me because I live in Manchester. I've got the little one. Yeah. Um, the swimming's on at 2 a.m., which is just going to be a shock to everyone else. But I'm going to be like, guys, I'm used to the night feeds. That's <laughs> <good."> <laughs> will, you be, will, you, will he be with you? <laughs> Yeah, well, I'm, I'm going to stay at home, so I'm gonna, just going to keep coming back and forth and Andy's around, my parents are going to help us out as yeah, well, so yeah. we'll, make, we'll make it work. But very quickly though, Rebecca, of course, you're in a blended family, aren't you? How hard or easy was it to sort of get to the stage where you're all at now, where it just works? Yeah, the thing is, I'm not going to pretend it's an, an easy process, it's really, really not, but I think the thing is, we all get along, we all communicate really well, and I think the thing is, when your common goal is your kids then it, it works because me and harry we prioritize summer we want the best for her and everything just evolves around her and we get on really well now because we have that level of trust of a level of respect and that communication is there so it's working so we're not going to change it <laughs> oh i really really love that and and the support that you gave harry when he came out as as bisexual was just incredible but rebecca it's been an absolute pleasure to talk to you this afternoon and i must say the fact that albie has slept through all of this yes, he's is amazing. Peach, peachy head. <laughs> Just amazing. Yeah. So in, like, in the middle of the night when you have those moments, you're thinking, oh, my goodness me, I'm so knackered, this is all. But just remember, you managed to get Albie to sleep through a live interview on national TV. <laughs> so well done, Mum. <laughs> See Thank you soon, you. Rebecca. Bye, honey. Bye. Bye. Bye.